Well, good morning and happy Thanksgiving to you all. It's good to see all your smiling faces here and online. I can't really see your face, but uh, that's okay. You're, you're beautiful anyway. Uh, I just want to welcome you to our service here at Victory Church of Red Deer. I'm going to encourage you to wear a mask and sing and celebrate our Lord this morning with us. Uh, even if you're online, uh, you can wear the mask. That way you don't have to wipe your TV afterwards. So uh, just want to say again, happy Thanksgiving to all of you um, who are going to have big dinners today. Feel free to anonymously and socially distancely drop off your leftovers at my house. I will enjoy them. I'll just open our service with prayer. Father, I thank you so much for being here this morning, God. I know that uh, you're excited to see us stand up and worship you, God. And I just uh, pray that you will take this as a, a fragrant offering to you, Lord, as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, Father, that is absolutely who you are. You are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. And Father, I just ask this morning that we would truly understand more of who you are. I pray this morning that we would be able to trust in you and rely on you. Father, that we would come to a place here where we just truly are thankful. Lord, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of our situation, that we would be a thankful people, that we would learn to trust you and to rely on you regardless of our circumstances. So we just praise you and we worship you this morning. You are a miracle worker in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> well, today or tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Father, I just pray that you'd give me a clear voice this morning. Lord, that in when this day and age where coughing is not allowed, Father, that you would just pour out your spirit and you'd bless me today. In Jesus' name, amen. I apologize for starting out this way. I, I am not sick. This is just a habitual thing for me, so please don't be nervous or worried. How many of you are nervous anyways? <laughs> For those of you that are online, we had one lady that raised her hand. I won't mention any names, but um, where are the ushers this morning? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't God good? I'd like to especially thank Kevin this morning, Kevin Chaddock. He uh, made a mount for the sword that Dr. Uh, George and Hazel gave us from Victory Churches. Doesn't that look cool? So I'd really like to thank him. I mean, this is, um, we're going to mount it someplace in the church here. And uh, he just, Kevin does this sort of stuff. So if you ever need him to do anything like this for free, just ask him and I'm sure he'll... <laughs> How's that for taking advantage? But life is good, isn't it? You know, this is Thanksgiving weekend, and so I want to talk about thanks or being thankful a little bit. But I really want to take us to a place where we don't just rely on our circumstances for us to be thankful in life. You see, what I've been talking about over the last little while, I've been talking about getting heaven inside of you. You know, and I want us to, to be at a place where we are just thankful regardless of our circumstances. And I could holler at you and I could tell you, you need to be thankful. And while there's some truth in that, I have found that you just aren't going to be thankful by having somebody holler at you and somebody try to tell you that you need to be thankful. You know, over the last little while, we've been talking about how to get heaven inside of us. And I want it to be a natural thing for you to be thankful regardless of your circumstances. And so I want to give you some practical things that you can do so that you become Thankful that this is your normal state because I believe, of course, maybe to start with, we might need to make some choices and to do some things. But I want this to be an outflow of our hearts. How many of you have been around people who were just joyful, regardless of their situation? You know, my grandpa was one of those people and... Grandpa had a really tough life. He'd lost two of his fingers in a thrashing machine. He had um, rheumatism in his other hand, so it didn't work properly for him. 
But Grandpa was the most happy person, just naturally, even though he suffered some real hardships in life. And I want us to be like my Grandpa. Well, probably not. But, um, but I want this to be a natural state for us. And I think if you can get the gist of what I'm talking about this morning, you will be thankful regardless of your situations. Now, we need to remember that God works in our situations, right? And God answers prayer and God rescues us. These things, of course, are true. But we need to come to a more mature place where we just need everything to be perfect in our life before we can be thankful. So should I quit rambling and begin? I want to talk about getting heaven inside of you. You know, many people's focus in life, and I've said this before, I'm just rehashing a little bit what we've talked about, but many people's focus in life is simply on getting their doctrine exactly perfect. And while it is very important for us to have good doctrine and for us to have our doctrine built on the Bible, that shouldn't be our main focus or our main goal in life. Sometimes people just focus on trying to get their behavior exactly right. And of course, getting behavior right is an important part of the Christian life or of life period. But that shouldn't be our main focus. Our main focus should be on the things that Jesus said were important. And the main thing, the most important thing, is for us to come to the place where we really do love God. Where we really love God. That should be our main focus because Jesus said that's the most important thing. So our main focus should be on learning to love God. And then the second thing that we're supposed to do is to learn to love each other. And how many of you know sometimes that's not the easiest thing in the world to do? I'm not talking about any of you here, of course, but for those people that are outside of these walls, not for anybody that's watching on the internet this morning, I'm talking about other people, I'm not talking about you. But sometimes it's difficult to love others, and yet Jesus said that's the most important thing for us, or the second most important thing for us to do. So first we love God, then we love others. How do we get to the place where we love God? How do we get to the place where we love other people? Well, God needs to do a work inside of us, but I think so often we think that God is just going to do a whoosh thing and everything is going to be changed and we will just be the perfect person that we're supposed to be. But I think we need to understand that it, sometimes it takes effort on our part for these things to happen. What sort of effort do we need to do? Do we need to follow all the rules and regulations that there are in the world? No. What you need to focus on is being a disciple of Jesus. Being a disciple, and then God will change your heart when you make the choice, you know what, I'm going to love God by being a disciple. When you make the choice that I'm going to love others, that I'm going to do good to those people who I really don't appreciate all the time. When you make that choice and you start to do those things, God will change your heart. And you will come to the place where that's just a natural outflow. So and so really insulted me today. But you know what, God? That's not who you've made me to be. And so I can just go forward and I can love that person anyway. Isn't that what we all want? You see, there's some practical things that we can do to make this happen. There's some practical steps that we can take to put heaven inside of us. And it begins with understanding what our priorities absolutely should be. All the while, we need to come to the place where our circumstances don't control us. 
We need to understand um, what 2 Peter 2.9 says. It says, if the Lord rescues Lot, He knows how to continually rescue the godly from their trials. God knows how to rescue you. And God will rescue you in your circumstances. But we need to come to the place where even in spite of our circumstances, we're still praising God and we're still learning to be thankful. I think that's a real key. Let me tell you something, too. I firmly believe if you don't learn to be thankful when your circumstances are bad, you'll never be thankful when your circumstances are good. We need to come to the place where we're not just relying on our circumstances. I think by us missing what I'm saying this morning, I think by us missing what I've said over the last few weeks, we pay a terrible price when we decide that we're really not going to be a disciple of Jesus, when we're not really going to be obedient to Him. We pay a terrible price. I don't think we understand how much of a price we pay in life. We miss out on the life that God wants us to have. God wants us to have a life of peace, I mean, what did Jesus say? Jesus said that he came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly, right? That's the life that Jesus wants us to have. But if we are just focused, I think the church in the past, us as Christians in the past have been so focused on just God changing our circumstances that we miss out on what God really wants to do in our life. And of course I want my circumstances changed. Of course I do. But I need to learn how to be thankful even in spite of my circumstances. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. And Paul gives us some clues here how we can get heaven inside of us, how we can get a thankful heart inside of us. First, he says in verse 16, he says, always be joyful. And you know, to some degree, that's a choice you make, right? There's always two different lives you can live. You can live a life looking at everything that's wrong, or you can live a life looking at what's right. And whichever life you focus on will be where you end up. That's a principle in life that we all need to learn. What you focus on now is where you'll end up. Think about that in life. In marriage, if your focus and you're starting to entertain thoughts of divorce, that's where you'll end up. But if your focus is on, you know what? I am going to be a better person for my spouse. That's where you'll end up, and your spouse generally will change as well. That's for free this morning. So always be joyful. And then verse 17, which is really a key, never stop praying. Never stop praying. Praying is a real key for God to change what's inside of you. Then in verse 18, he says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for those, for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful in all circumstances. To be thankful in all, thir- in all circumstances. To be thankful in all circumstances, pray. Paul told the Philippian church if they would pray, he said, the peace of God would guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Learn to be a praying person. Learn to talk to God. Learn to communicate with God. And you know what? I don't think this is a process that you learn and then you, became, you become a perfect person when it comes to your communicating with God. You know what I pray quite regularly? I pray that God would teach me to pray. Jesus' disciple said, teach me to pray, and Jesus gave them 
the Lord's Prayer. And that wasn't just a formula prayer, but that's a basis for how we can learn how to pray. But I'm not satisfied with my prayer life. And it's not that I think that everything is falling apart right now in my relationship to God, but I want to do better when it comes to, to praying. And I think that should be our heart in these things. Not that we're trying to be... I'm not trying to make you struggle for things. I'm not trying to make you um, not be satisfied where that you're at because I believe we always should be content and be happy where we're at, but there's always more. And so God has more for us, and that includes our communication with Him. You know, we need to learn to pray. And praying helps us to be thankful in all circumstances. If God's will for you to be thankful in all circumstances, praying really helps with this. I'm not trying to tell us that we need to be phony either. You know, I want us to be real. So often people decide that they just need to pretend and then they'll... What was the old saying we used to have in churches? Fake it until you make it. And you know, there might be a little bit of truth in that, but that also can lead to a whole world of hypocrisy. And you know, if, you're, if you've lost your job and your dog has died, don't tell everybody, oh, I'm so happy. You know, we need to, we absolutely need to be real. A long time ago, I read a book about a man's son who'd been kidnapped in South America somewhere. One of the countries was really struggling, and he was there, and he was kidnapped by rebels. And his dad, who was in the States, found out that his son had been kidnapped. And his dad's attitude was, I'm going to get some Marines. I'm going to swim upstream in the rivers. I'm going to kill crocodiles and alligators with my knife. And I'm going to take a machine gun and I'm going to blow everybody away who's got my son. Nobody can identify with that? You know what the Holy Spirit told him? The Holy Spirit told him to start praising me, praising God. And so what he started to do, and he said he felt like a real hypocrite when he started, but he started praising God. And you know what? His attitude changed as he prayed God, prayed to God. He started to be thankful for having such a wonderful son. And you know what? God gave him a plan and some ideas about what to do. And the end of the story is his son was returned to him. You see, praying changes things. Praying changes our heart. To be thankful, learn how to pray. And in the midst of tough situations, really learn how to pray. And let me throw in just something else a little bit for free. You know, when something bad happens to you, learn not to make that thing your entire focus because at the beginning stages, you can cut that off and you can change the direction of your emotions. You can change what's going on inside your head, but you, it's so much easier if you catch it when it's early than when it has become a thought pattern in your life and it just seems like that thought takes over. Learn to control your thinking early on and it will make being thankful for you so much easier. I want to show you this morning something about circumstances which so easily can discourage us and take us away from having our focus on God. I want to show you something about tough circumstances or difficulties in life that actually, when you understand what these things are actually doing in your life, 
it will make it so that when you're facing these sorts of things, it will make life easier for you. You know, in Revelation 7, starting at verse 13, the setting is that there is a whole bunch of people who have been through really difficult circumstances. Some translations of the Bible talk about the Great Tribulation. And the people who have been through this Great Tribulation, they're standing um, before the throne of God, and there's such a, a great crowd of them. But I want you to see what... Um, Jesus said about those people who had been through these really tough circumstances. Look at what it says. I'll start reading in verse 13. Then one of the elders asked me, remember these are the people that are before the throne of God. Then one of the elders asked me, who are these in glistening white robes? And where have they come from? I answered, my Lord, you must know. He said to me, they are the ones who have had their robes, who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb and have emerged from the midst of great pressure and ordeal. You see, the people have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Simply what that means in language that we can understand is these people have given their lives to Jesus Christ. They've asked God to forgive them of their sins. And God has taken away their dirty black hearts, so to speak, and made them pure and white because they've been forgiven and they've become perfect people in God's sight. What an incredible thing. And then they've been given white robes, right? All of their dirty clothes, kind of like baptism, all of their dirty clothes have been removed and they've been given clean, pure, white robes. And you know, that's what Jesus does when we come to Him. But it says, they've emerged from the midst of great pressure and ordeal. These people have... White robes. And if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, that's you this morning. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, that is available to you. Can you imagine living without guilt? Can you imagine living without shame? You see, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you don't have to live with guilt and shame anymore. This is basic stuff, but I think it's important for us to see um, this. And then um, they talk about the people who have been through this great pressure and ordeal. It says in verse 15, for this reason, because they've given their life to Jesus, because they've, um, because they've put on white robes that Jesus has given them to wear, and because they've stood firm in the midst of um, terrible trials and difficulties, like I said, some people uh, or some translations of the Bible use the word the great tribulation. Because they've come through these things, it says, for this reason they are before the throne of God, ministering to Him as priests day and night, before I go any farther, I want you to see because they have remained faithful through great tribulation, through great trials, and I know some of us are going through these things, but because they've been through these things, and of course because they've given their life to Jesus Christ, it's done something for them. They're ministering to Him as priests day and night within His cloud-filled sanctuary. And the enthroned one spreads over them His tabernacle shelter. Their souls will be completely satisfied. Souls will be completely satisfied. And neither the sun nor any scorching heat will affect them. And I want you to see, I want you to see this is not just talking about heaven when we die. But I want you to see that this is for us now too as well. I mean, of course, 
when we're in heaven and we die, it will be completely fulfilled. But I want you to see that these, this is available to us here and now as well. Their souls will be completely satisfied for the Lamb at the center of the throne continuously shepherds them unto life, guiding them to the everlasting fountains of the water of life, and God will wipe from their eyes every last tear. And I submit to you this morning, when you can grasp this fact, it will change your attitude. It will change your heart when there's difficult times that you're going through. I want you to see that the end result of that is that you put yourself in a place where God really can and does bless you. You see, I don't understand or I've never understood. I mean, I know, but I've never really understood why People like the Apostle Paul would pray that he would um, partake in Christ's sufferings. I mean, who wants to suffer, right? But you see, when you can understand what, what going through periods of times like that, when you can understand what it does for you, you can actually get to the place, I believe, and I'm not sure any of us are there yet, but you can actually get to the place where you can rejoice in spite of your trials, in spite of the different things that are happening to you, because this is taking you to a, a real place of blessing. I mean, you know, there's lots of verses that back me up with this. Think of what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 11 and 12. He said, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, lie and say all kinds of evil things about you because of me. What did Jesus say next? He said, rejoice and be glad. You have a great reward in heaven. When people persecute you, you can rejoice and be glad because you have a great reward in heaven. The disciples, when they were persecuted, they went away rejoicing because they'd been counted worthy to suffer for Jesus Christ. You see... Going through trials and difficulties causes us to reap a reward. A reward in heaven, but yes, now as well. And when you grasp this simple fact, it helps you to be thankful in spite of the circumstances that you're going through. And I, I want to tell you, the natural mind can't grasp this. People in their natural state cannot grasp this truth, but that does not make it any less real. I mean, think of what James said in James chapter 1. He said, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. That's true. Consider it pure joy. Your natural mind can't grasp that fact. But when you start to understand Jesus' love for you, when you start to understand how um, His love motivates Him to work on your behalf, when you start to put these things into your heart, when you start to understand that these things are absolutely true, you will come to the place where you can be joyful, not just only is in circumstances, but you can be joyful because you know that God is doing a work inside of you. Make sense? James wouldn't have told us that if it wasn't true. Now let me give you some advice. I used to quote this verse to people when they'd come and see me, and they were going through a tough, circumstance and I could say hey God is using this to mature you be joyful in whatever circumstances you're in this is what you're supposed to do and I thought I was great telling people that 
And then I was going through a really tough time once and somebody quoted that verse to me and it just made me mad. So, <laughs> so I'm not trying to make you mad this morning, but I'm trying to take us to a different place. I mean, Romans 5 basically says the same thing. Verse 3 says, we also, Paul said, we also rejoice in our sufferings. And then he says this, takes us to a place of hope that doesn't disappoint us. You see, we're opening the door for a whole new way for us to be blessed. Jesus said in Matthew 5.10, He says, How enriched you are when you bear the wounds of being persecuted for doing what is right. How blessed you are when you bear the wounds of being persecuted for doing what is right. Let me, let me just throw in something for free here. We're talking about being blessed for doing things that are right. If you're an idiot and you're doing purposely doing wrong things, you're going to suffer the consequence for those things. And that's something different than what I'm talking about here too. Also, let me throw in something else for free. I'm giving you a lot for free this morning, I guess. But let me throw something else. I mean, when I was a kid, right? Um, somebody, an older person, would be struggling with gout. I used to think that it was all, only old people that could have gout until I had gout myself and I feel a lot more sympathy for them. But, you see, a person would, who struggled with gout or something would say, well, I'm just suffering for Jesus. No, that's not suffering for Jesus. But let me tell you, your response in the midst of things like that makes a difference. You see, if you get your identity from your gout and you just tell everybody about how miserable your life is, that's not going to take you to the place of blessing that I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about being phony, never admitting that you have gout. But if you do, you can tell people, but you're not getting your identity from it and you're maintaining a thankful attitude towards God. You see, it's not... Um, it's don't think that just because there's an ailment in your body or something that this is taking you to a place of blessing. It will if you respond properly to it. And it also, if somebody is persecuting you for the cause of Christ, this also will take you to a place of blessing if you respond properly to the persecution and don't let it throw you off course. I'm talking about a whole new way for us to live. And I want us, I myself want this, and I want us to be a people who are thankful, who are not letting circumstances throw us off course. But today is a day of thanksgiving, and I know some of you are struggling in different areas. But I want you to see that you still have reasons to be thankful. The guy who had his son kidnapped came to the place where he started to thank God for his son. This takes you to a different place. This takes you to a different realm. I'm not just hollering at you and telling you to be thankful. I'm giving you, I'm trying to give you a reason to be thankful. When you can pray in whatever situation you're in, and you can see how God can use that situation to bring you blessings. It puts you in a different place. But you can't, you can't go through these things just on your own, just with your own willpower. God is taking you. When you put heaven inside of you, then, then you can... Be thankful in the situations you're in. Let me take you to another verse that kind of says the converse of what I've been saying, kind of like the chicken and the egg thing. In Acts 14, 22, it says, it is necessary for us to enter the realm of God's kingdom 
Because that's the only way you will endure our many, that's the only way we will endure our many trials and persecutions. You see, what have I been talking to you about over the last while? Excuse me. What have I been talking to you about? I've been talking to you about heaven's kingdom realm. I've been basically talking about what it's like to have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And of course, everybody who has, who's become a Christian, Roman says that if you've become a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. But I'm talking about us coming to a place where that changes how we think, that changes how we act. We start to love our enemies because you know what? It's just in our heart to love even our enemies. That we start to love each other because it's just in our heart to love each other. This is the place that is available to us. That I'm trying to open the door for us so that we can enter into this realm. And you won't survive in life. Or at least I don't know how people do it who go through terrible circumstances and terrible difficulties in life without Jesus. And yes, people go through those things successfully. I'm not saying that they don't. But I don't know how they do it without having Jesus inside of them, giving them the strength that they need in difficult circumstances. What I'm talking about is us finding an exciting new way to live. Because I want us to really live. I want us to have the life that Jesus said that he came to give us. He said, I've come to give them life and life abundantly. This is where I want us to go. This is where I want to stand up. And I want you to know that that is available to you. Now, today. But it doesn't come from just having everything go perfect in your life. But it comes from having the Holy Spirit inside of you and being aware that there is a whole new exciting way for us to live. Always remember when you hear a message like this, always remember what um, Peter said in 2 Peter 2.9. I'll repeat it one more time. It says, if the Lord rescued Lot, he knows how to continually rescue the godly from their trials. You can trust God to rescue you. And you can also trust God that he's doing a work inside of you as you go through difficulties and as you go through circumstances that you can be joyful and you can be thankful. Father, I so thank you for the plan that you have for us. I thank you that you didn't just leave us as orphans, that you've sent your Holy Spirit to guide us, to direct us. I thank you, Father, for the simple plan that you have for us to have abundant life. And I just ask, Lord, that there wouldn't be a person listening online this morning or a person here that would miss out on what you have. Father, that there wouldn't be a person that leaves this place being discouraged. I thank you, Father, that you're doing amazing things in the life of each one of us. You're so awesome, Lord. And we just praise you. And we worship you. You know, I firmly believe in us being honest in this congregation. How many of you would say, Chuck, you know, I really have been going through some difficulties recently, and I must confess that what you're talking about, even though I know what I'm not living in that. If that's you, would you just show me your hand this morning that you're not living with the thankfulness and the joy that God has provided for you? Yeah. Quite a few hands. Father, I pray for these people. I ask, Lord, that you would touch their hearts. 
Father, that you would remind them of the truth of your word. Father, I pray that you would do a supernatural work in their life so that even in the midst of this, that they can have joy and peace that comes from you. Father, open their eyes to see the bigger picture. Open their eyes to see the bigger picture. And Father, I so thank you that you love each one, that you care about each one. And Father, that you have good things in store for them. And Lord, I'm especially excited about that someday we get to spend eternity with you. That we get to be around your throne, worshiping you. Lord, just so awesome what you have for us. And Father, I also ask that if there's anyone who's never given their life to you that's listening or is here in the church this morning, I pray, Father, that they would surrender their life to you. You know, to surrender your life to Jesus, all you need to do to start the process is simply to say, Jesus, come into my life. I give my life to you. And then don't just do that and go back to your normal way of living, but tell somebody, we would love to help you here. We'll give you some information. We'll come alongside of you and we'll be able to help you to um, live a life that Jesus wants you to have. Just remember that God has so much in store for you. So, I would just encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ. You definitely won't regret it if you do. I'm not promising you a life of ease and pleasure, but I am promising you a life of fulfillment, a life of hope, and a life of peace that only the Holy Spirit can give to you. God is just so good. God is so good. Let's really become disciples of his. Let's really make the choice that we're going to love each other and that we're going to even love our enemies and that we're going to do good to each other. Let's make those choices and see where it takes us. Thank you so much for coming this morning. And uh, I'm done. Jared, you're up. Thank you, pa Pastor Chuck. Um, what a great message about being thankful. Um, and, you know, like it's Thanksgiving, so it puts you in mind of being thankful. And I had, you know, I asked myself, like, so many things that I am thankful for. I have a beautiful wife, you know, some four awesome kids and a good job, you know, lots of different things to be thankful for. But I, I had to ask myself, what am I most thankful for? And it really brought me back to the moment of my salvation what God has done in my life since um, compared to where my life was going back then. Um, maybe someday I'll share that testimony with you. But, you know, like to me, the best way to give back to God and show him how thankful you are is to help spread the gospel message to other people so that they can be changed and be thankful too. Because what better gift is there than the gift of salvation? So... Think about that as you give this morning. Um, we have several ways you can give. Mobile giving, you can give online. We have uh, an Interact Machine available at the Info Center. You can put your envelopes in a couple different boxes here in the church. But um, I'm just going to pray for our offering. So I thank you, Lord, uh, for being here today, God. I thank you that uh, you've provided a way for us to enter into the heavenly realm and to experience true righteousness through, you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. I just uh, pray, Lord, that uh, for anyone who is alone today, God, that they, they would find themselves sitting at your table, God. I pray that if, uh, as we're out and about and hanging out with family, God, properly socially distancing, God, that if we see somebody who could use a touch from you, God, that we don't shy away from that, but that we approach them 
and we tell them our own story and that we invite them in and love them. God, and that goes for the people that we might not necessarily enjoy so much, God. Let's look past that and just love those people because we're thankful for the love that you've poured out on us. I just pray to you and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to thank you for coming this morning online too. Um, you know, I hope you guys have a great day today uh, with your Thanksgiving dinners. Um, uh, just have a couple of announcements. You know, if you've given your heart to the Lord, and uh, you want to declare that to the, the world. I know the feeling. Um, we do have a baptism coming up. So if you're interested in having a baptism, uh, there is a black card that's uh, available in the seats in front of you there. You can also find it online on our website. If you fill up that card and uh, just uh, submit it, the church will get a hold of you and uh, they'll go over the details with you. But on October 25th, we actually have another baptism coming. So. Um, it won't be a river baptism like the last time. Uh, it will be a little, little chilly for that, but <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, baptisms are awesome. It's a great time for us to get together and really celebrate with somebody who's given their heart to the Lord. So, um, Also, on October the 31st, uh, we do have an event coming here to the church. Uh, it's not a Halloween event. It's a trunk and treat event. So... If you want to come here, have a safe place to bring your kids so they don't uh, get the <clears throat> dickens scared out of them with some of the things that are happening out in the world on that day, bring them here. We're going to have a whole bunch of people here set up with their vehicles, masked up, decorated, with a trunk full of treats. And if you get here early enough, there will be some left and I won't get to them all. So make sure you do that. It's going to be a great time. And you know, the best part about it is it's an awesome way for us to reach out into our community and to show people how much fun it can be to celebrate without all the <clears throat> trappings of Halloween. Um, so just come on out, enjoy the evening, uh, go crazy with the decorations, uh, you know, dress up, have your kids dress up and, and we'll have some fun together. We'll fellowship and we'll enjoy Lots of chocolate. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. That's October the 31st uh, from 6 to 7 p.m. And uh, if you want to be involved in that, if you want to bring a vehicle and decorate, just uh, I encourage you to let the church know. You can do that online as well. Email us um, or let us know in person. So just keep that in mind. And uh, while I dismiss you and let you out of here to go have your turkey, I will pray for us. So Father, I just thank you so much for being here. Thank you for... Uh, you know, providing a way for us, God, to just uh, enter into your kingdom and uh, enjoy you, Lord. And I thank you that uh, we can worship you in freedom um, and that we can just celebrate you even on this day of Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.